Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, The Flawless Flight. Proudly we hail the officers and men of the Air Training Command. The employment of their mission is to keep our Air Force first in the world in methods and techniques related to aerial warfare. In this dramatic presentation, you will meet two brothers, and if there isn't much brotherly love lost between them, well, that's what makes it our story. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but first... When you make an investment, you want it to pay off, right? Well, fellas, how about those years you invested in the service, learning skills, gaining experience valuable to yourself and your country? You can make those years pay off in big dividends today by becoming a member of the United States Air Force. Yes, indeed, if you've been in any of the armed forces, you may be eligible to enlist in the Air Force in a gray that'll be a real pleasant surprise to you. You see, the Air Force needs men skilled in certain important fields, and you may be just such a man. If so, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your previous service experience to work and to collect on those credits you've earned toward a comfortable retirement. Your Air Force recruiter has a folder full of details, so you write or visit him right away. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now we present Act One of the proudly we hailed production, The Flawless Flight. Buffalo flight, jet to tower, requesting permission to take off, and instructions, over. Tower to Buffalo flight, jet, runway number four. Go ahead. Roger. Okay, you fellas ready? Right, Captain, sure. Ready? Sure, I'm ready. This morning, I'm not making any mistakes. This morning, it's gonna be perfect. Lieutenant Harris, that was flawless. Fat chance I've got of hearing anything like that with my own brother for an instructor. You missed it a mile, bud. That's what I get. But not this morning. There isn't going to be anything this morning for Les to ride me about. Today's flight, even the big jet ace couldn't do it better. And someday, someday it's going to be me, maybe. Bud Harris, instead of Les. Coming into that railroad station back home. What's this all about? Hi, everybody. Well, it's good to be back, but I sure didn't expect all this. Oh, Joe, you're famous, kid. Got to put on some kind of a show. Of course, we don't have any ticket tape here in Gardnerville, but the thought's the same. Well, thanks. I sure appreciate it, but I don't deserve... Hey, Bud! Bud! Hi, Wes. Boy, it's great to see you. Well, son. Hi, Dad. Well, you look the same, son. Well, sure. What'd you expect? <laughs> Remember me, Les? Huh? Why, Sally McKenzie. And all grown up, no freckles, no pigtails. <laughs> sure, I wouldn't have recognized you at all, except there's not another head of red hair like that in the whole town. <laughs> Welcome home, Les. Yeah, now tell me, son, how does it feel to be back? Oh, just about perfect, Dad. And, well, I, I just didn't expect all this reception, that's all. I can't get over it. Well, you're Gardner Vale's most famous citizen now. Uh, I cut it out. Hey, bud. <laughs> yeah? Come over here. Yeah, sure, Les. Hey, how about him, Dad? He's grown six inches, I'll bet. Sure, I'm looking up at him. Hey, boy, you're all filled out, too. I played some football last year at high. Yeah, I know. Mom wrote me. I sure never know what gives with you if I waited for you to give me the news. What's the matter? Don't they teach you writing in school anymore? Oh, you wouldn't be interested in that stuff. What do you mean? I... Well, I'll give you the business on that later. All right now, let's get back to the house and Mom. It was funny, that homecoming. I almost didn't feel like I knew less anymore. After you read about a guy in the paper almost every day... 
Even when it's your own brother, you, you get the feeling it's someone else. Another MIG racked up today to the score of Captain Les Harris of Gardnerville, bringing the jet ace total to 12. Or Sabre Jets today shot down three MIGs and one probable. The latter was Captain Les Harris and will be added to his already imposing record of 14 certains, seven probably destroyed. Well, we didn't get much chance to talk either. Later at the church, everybody in town was there. Hey, bud. Yeah, Les. Where's Mom? I've been looking all over for her. Oh, she's probably out in the kitchen. Well, I don't know if I like all this. I've been home for four hours now, and I haven't had a chance to hardly more than say hello to my own family. Yeah. What's with the suitcase? You going somewhere? Yeah, I am. Well, gee, where? Let a fella in on this stuff. I'm leaving for aviation cadet school tonight. Cadet school? Why didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't get the chance, Les. Well, I know not here, but I mean in a letter. Oh, I don't know. It seemed like you had more important things to think about. More important than my own brother? Are you kidding? Well, you are sort of a big shot now. You're a national figure now. National figure, my foot. Listen, bud, there's one thing you've got to get straight. One year from today, you walk up to anyone outside Gardnerville and ask him who Les Harris is, and they'll tell you anything from a pole vaulter to a guy who's trying to float to Hawaii on a homemade raft. Ah, you're crazy. No, no, I'm not crazy, bud. I'm just a guy. I'm just like any other guy in Gardnerville. They're just the breaks that got my name in the papers and not some other guys who probably deserved it a heck of a lot more. Well, I guess so, but... But just the same, I hope I get the same breaks and get assigned to the 86s. Gee, I wish I'd known you were leaving. I, there's so many things I'd like to tell you. Look, maybe I can boil it all down in a hurry. Now, what you want to remember above everything else, bud, is that the Air Force is a lot of things. But never think of it as a bunch of aces all competing with each other to see who can shoot down the most enemy planes. First place, we're at peace now. Let's hope we always will be. Our function is to be so strong that no one will ever want to break that peace. I think it's a fine thing you're doing, going in now. But just remember, the one thing that makes the Air Force what it is, is a teamwork. From the chief of staff down to the rawest airman basic, everyone is just as essential in his job as everyone else. Sure, Les. <laughs> well, I guess you don't understand it yet. But believe me, someday you will. I guess it's something you have to find out on your own. That's Buckeye down there. We're nearing the first target for this morning. That's the Napalm Range. Now, everybody understand what we're going to do? Sure. All right, now remember, I'll go in first, and I want you to observe it. Then I'll join up. We'll make a regular attack run together. And don't forget the space out. You don't want to get too close, okay? Right, Captain. Okay, that's the range now. Out there ahead. Oh, yeah, sure. I can see the burnt areas. Oh, uh, one more thing. Remember what I told you about the Napalm bombs? What was that again, Captain? If anyone's bomb fails to release when he attempts to drop them over the target, he needs to return to the field immediately. There's no particular danger. It's merely precautionary, and sometimes they do fail to drop. If this should happen, the rest of us will continue on with the balance of the morning's work, and we'll meet in the briefing room afterwards as usual. All right. Okay, then. I'll go in now. <laughs> That was a real bullseye, Captain. You think we can all get there, too? I wouldn't be surprised. A couple of years now, and you guys will be flying circles around an old man like me. But not today, Captain. Not today. <laughs> I'm not exactly ready to turn in my flying gear yet. Anyhow, come on now. Let's try it together. Teamwork. That's a lot of bunk. Sure, you gotta make sure everybody knows what he's doing. But after that, where's the teamwork? If Pete gets hits and I miss, what's teamwork got to do with it? I'm the one that gets the lecture. You came in a little high, buddy, or you were wide on that one. Gotta keep your nose on the target. Sure, you gotta watch the other guy and not get in his way. But when it comes to the target, boy, you're on your own. She looks small from up here. Never think you could lay those eggs right on the nose like Les did. There he is again, right on the target, another bullseye. Now Pete, now he's right on too, just the right distance from Les's hits. Now. I can't see it yet. 
Don, gotta join up. I went wide. I think I did. Oh, well, at least I'm flying. That's something. I don't know if it's enough, though. It doesn't rate a brass band reception at home. And Sally. All that day, all Sally could talk about was less. Sally? Yes, bud. I guess your mother needs me. They're running out of sandwiches. Got to make some more. Gee, I guess everybody in town is here. Yeah, I, uh, I just wanted to sort of say goodbye, Sally. Goodbye? Is it that time already? But I, I'm sorry. I, I'm going to miss you. Who are you? Of course. Gosh, we've grown up together. Our, our folks have lived next door to each other since before we were born. <laughs> But it's awful. Les gone all this time, and now you're going away. Yeah? It's funny. I, I thought maybe we three could have some of our old times together. You know, the way we used to be. Two of us tagging after Les. Yeah. <laughs> Remember how I used to get so mad at us when we'd follow him up to his private fishing hole? Then half the time we'd catch more than he did. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you can tag along again now. Oh, it'll be different now. Probably in, isn't interested in that stuff anymore. But doesn't he look just wonderful in his uniform? All those ribbons and everything. Yeah. When you come home next time, you'll you'll be in uniform, I guess, too. Yeah, but it'll be a long time before there'll be any ribbons. I know, but it's different with you. I mean, you won't be in any danger like Les, thank goodness. I don't see how I could stand it, worrying about you. If I thought you were going off to some horrible place with an unpronounceable name. <laughs> would you really worry? Of course I would. Look at how we both felt about Les, waiting for the mail and listening to the news every night. Uh, oh, hi, Les. We were talking about you. It was good, I hope. <laughs> there isn't anything bad to say. You're the town hero. Uh, cut it out. How's the fishing? Can you still catch more than me and Bud put together? Um, I'll make a little bet with you. You're on. Meet you at Peck's Pond tomorrow. It's a deal. <laughs> say, Bud, Dad says it's about time for you to get to the station. I thought I'd drive you down. Oh, you can't leave the party, Les. You're the guest of honor. Well, I'll be right back. Mom's busy in the kitchen. She can't leave. I don't trust Dad to drive tonight. He's so excited he'd probably run into a telephone pole. Oh, pole. I'll drive, but... No, Mom sent me out to uh, look for you. Oh. She needs you out there to help. Well, look, uh, let's make it easier. It's only a couple of blocks from here to the station, and all I've got is one bag. I took the rest of my stuff down to the station this morning. I can get down there alone. Well, look, you can't do that. This is your big moment. Sure I can. I don't want to bust up the party. Well, Bud's right. After all, it's not like this kind of thing happens every day in the week. And anyhow, he'll be back on leave soon, and we can make it up to him then. No, I can't let him do it. Sure, Les, sure, it's okay. Well, I'll say goodbye to you now, and go in and tell the folks and sort of sneak out quietly. You know, as Sally says, you can give me a big welcome home sometime. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hailed production of The Flawless Flight, and we will return to the second act in just one moment. Here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you may realize. Yes, indeed, the United States Air Force has instituted a new policy that offers big new benefits to veterans of all the armed forces. The Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, the Air Force wants you, and they'll put you right on the job. So for full details, write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask them for the folder for prior servicemen. You'll see how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Remember, you've earned credits toward a fine retirement in the service. So you protect your initial investment as an airman. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. You are listening to the proudly we held production of The Flawless Flight. And now we return to our second act. So I went to the station alone. Pretty rough, because if Les's homecoming didn't happen every day, neither did my going off to aviation cadet training. And the months in school before I came home on my first leave didn't make it any easier. Hi, bud. Mail's in. Oh, yeah, thanks. Got a letter from my girl. Oh, that's swell. Gee, she's the cutest. <laughs> Black hair, big blue eyes, and a figure. Mm. Hey, that letter you got it's in a very feminine handwriting. What's she like? Well, what's the matter? 
Nothing. Nothing's the matter. Well, come on, then. Tell me about your girl. No, never mind. Well, okay. Anyhow, Ann's coming up next weekend with her folks. I got reservations for him at the guest house. I want you to meet her. Yeah, yeah, Pete, I'd like to. Say, look. Why don't you see if you can get your girl to come, too? It'd be swell if they'd meet. No, I, I don't think she could come. Well, why not? Well, she's she's too busy. Oh, she worked? No, but... Well, then what? Nothing, Pete, nothing. Leave me alone, will you? Okay, okay. I guess I was rough on Pete. But a guy hates to admit, even to his best friend, that he's losing his girl and to his own brother. And that letter that day was a payoff. Every letter I got from her had Les's name in it. Les and I were fishing the other day. Les and I went to a movie last night. Oh, sure, she'd tell me they were talking about me, but I could imagine that. Yeah, when Les was captain of the football team and president of the school, he was too busy to be interested in the little kid next door. Those days, it was Sally and me. Now Les was back, an ace, the most important guy in town. And Sally? Well, she wasn't just the kid next door anymore. She was grown up and beautiful. Okay, guys, here's the next target. Now remember, this is a convoy bringing supplies to a forward dump, and we attack it just like it was for real. Sure looks real. All except that it isn't moving. Now, as before, I'll go in first, you observe. Then we'll do it again all together, in the attack pattern. Right, right. Easy as pie. Just the way Les does everything. Well, this is going to look easy, too, even if it isn't. Okay, everybody, let's go. Don't forget now what I told you about the breakaway. Hey, that was pretty good. Even if I do say so, right on there, too, right on the button. Well, Les will find something to say about it, though. Like the other day. It was a good morning. Just like this one, until the debriefing. I have all got the specific items on this morning's flight, but I want to discuss something else. That's your general attitudes. What do you mean, Captain? Well, I'll show you. As long as you asked, I'll start with you, Pete. Now, you like to get the feel of your aircraft. But sometimes I think you forget about the fact that you're riding a piece of machinery... And it has limitations, understand? Now, Walt, you've learned a lot about an airplane, and I venture to say you haven't forgotten a thing you've ever been taught. But just try to relax a little and forget about looking at the instruments for about three seconds one of these mornings. Enjoy the clouds and the desert below and those little one-street towns we fly over. All right, I guess that's all. Pete and Walt, you can go now. I'll ask him to stay. If you're going to say anything to me, you can say it in front of them. Okay, fellas, you can go. Right, Captain. All right, Les. Now that you have me staying after school like some little kid... Bud, what I'm going to say to you is in a professional capacity and has nothing to do with our relationship, nothing whatever. Well, why don't you quit riding me, then? I don't ride you. I treat you just as I do the others. Yeah. You may think you do. But you're just, just the way you always were. Big brother Les telling little buddy where to get off. But listen. What a break. All through training, I'm in the top third of my class, and I have to draw you for my advanced instructor. Oh, now, simmer down. Simmer down, simmer down. How do you think I feel? You know a lot depends on the recommendations you make when we complete this course as to where I'll be assigned. The way I see it, I'll be lucky if I get a job flying goony birds to the junkyards when I get out of here. Now stop that. Yes, sir. When I found out that we were both being assigned here, I couldn't have been more pleased. And as for your drawing me for an instructor, you're all wrong. I requested it. Yeah, yeah. And you've got me right where you wanted me. That's not so. I thought I could show you a few tricks that maybe some of the other guys don't I'm know. Sure, since you're the hottest pilot in the whole Air Force. I'm not. You know it, and that's not the point. It doesn't take a hot pilot to show someone else how to be one. Well, I don't know. You may mean that. It isn't so much that I mind you making me look like a dope with the other guys with Pete and Walt... But what I do mind is my hotshot brother making time with my girl while my back is turned. Now, you're not going to deny she's writing to you, are you? Because I saw the envelope on your dresser yesterday. Of course I won't deny it. Why shouldn't she write? Anyhow... Anyhow, nothing. Anyhow, I don't want any half-baked explanation. 
All right. You won't get one, then. And I'm putting in a request today that you be transferred to another flight without prejudice and by mutual agreement. No, you don't. You don't get out of it that easily. I'm sticking in this flight. You asked for me, and you're stuck with me for the duration of this course, like it or not. You hear? I hear. And I'll leave it that way, if you want. But from now on, you can forget all about our relationship. Have you got that, Lieutenant Harris? I've got it, Captain Harris. You can go now. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, fellas, we're nearing the rocket range. This is our last mission for this morning. Everyone know what to do? Right. I... Okay, everybody, that was a demonstration. Now let's try it. winds it up. The flying goes so fast and the classes go so slow. Yes, it's always the way. Anyhow, you're going on your last leg. The last leg. A few more weeks, the course will be over. Gee, that was beautiful the way those rockets hit in there. I'll bet Les won't have so good a bunch the next flight he trains. Now that Pete. See, we've been together since we both started. Green as grass. And now, see what a flight we are. And war. Cautious, but always right there, right where you need him, on the button. Pretty good. We meet in the briefing room as usual. Okay, Captain. Man, this coffee hits the spot. Hey, anybody got a smoke? Yeah, here. Get a match. No, I think we did pretty good this morning. It was crazy, man, crazy. Well, where do we hear what the captain has to say? Yeah, he's sure not quick with those compliments. But, brother, when you get one, you sure feel good. <laughs> you said it. You know, we are on the last leg. Wonder where we'll all be next month at this time. Yeah, it's going to seem funny, Pete, without you. <laughs> if I ever get a roommate who owns his own ties, I won't know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> and if I ever get one that doesn't shake the rafters with a story, hey. I won't know what to do. Well, I guess neither one of us has to worry, hmm? When are you going to take the big leap, bud? Uh, I don't know, Pete. Come on, don't kid me. I know that little gal's just waiting until you have a permanent station. Well, we'll see. Seriously, Pete, you too, Walt. It's been great being with you two. I couldn't ask for a better flight, the way we all work together. Well, if we ever had to do it under pressure, we'd be the best. You're darn right we would. And you know something? I've just been thinking... There have been a lot of guys through here before us. Yeah, there'll be a lot after us, too. That's right. And you know, the chances are that when we finish, we'll get assignments halfway around the earth from each other. Yeah, that's for sure. Say, I think I hear the captain. Well? What's the verdict, Captain? What did we do wrong? Yeah, give us the worst. It was a good mission, fellas. Well, what are you waiting for? I'll see you in the morning. Hey, you hear that? <laughs> you know, I'd rather hear that from that guy than 80,000 words from anybody else. Hey, when he says it, you know he means it. Yeah. Hey, where are you going, bud? I, uh, gotta see somebody. What's with him? Les? Hey, Les? Yeah? Wait a minute, I want to talk to you. Yes? Les? I don't know what to say, except... Except I've been a fool. You can say that again. Listen, Les. Uh, what you said in there about the morning mission... I don't know. I guess that was it that made me understand. Well, uh, everything you've said to me about the Air Force since the night I left for training. I don't know what that has to do with it. I just told you it was a good mission. It was. Well, that's just it. It was the mission. I guess I should never have gone in the first place the way I looked at things. All I wanted to do was show you up, 
somehow be a bigger shot, a hotter pilot, more of a hero than you were? That was crazy, bud. I told you your name in the papers doesn't mean anything. Well, I understand it now. You said yourself that night that I'd have to find it out for myself. I just did, Les. When you're out there on a flight with three other great guys, you're not worrying about what your score's gonna be or whether you'll have people reading about you the next day. You're figuring how to protect your flight. How to do everything the best you know how because they're all doing the same. Like a team. That's right, like a team. And listen, Les, about Sally... I don't care. Now look, I tried to explain. It you don't have to explain. Teamwork stops off duty. No matter how impressed she is with you, I, I'm taking leave the end of the month, and I'm going to do a little impressing myself. Well, I'd still like to tell you You that... don't have to. doesn't make any difference now. If I can't beat you at time, well, I'm just not worried. Any mail for me, Sergeant? Lieutenant Harris? Uh, just one this morning. Well, at least it's from the right party. Dear Bud, I was getting so tired... tired of having to get, get all, all my, my information, information about, about you... From, from Les's letters, letters to your mom and dad. I can see what he meant about their teaching writing at high school. Anyhow, I finally wrote Les last week, but even he doesn't answer. For Pete's sake, why don't you write? And another thing, what's the deal? When, when are, you are you going, going to, to get, get down, down to the cases, cases and, and ask me, me to marry you? The answer is yes. Hey! Good news, Lieutenant? Oh, it sure is, Sergeant. It sure is. Many times a man is skilled in a particular job, yet he's unable to find a use for it. Has this happened to you? Are you a service veteran with a service gain skill that's just going to waste? Well, if you are, then listen carefully. You know, you may be able to put that skill to work as a member of your United States Air Force. Right now, the Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in all of the armed forces. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, you can put that experience to work in the Air Force and do so at a higher grade and with higher pay than you may realize. You've earned credits toward a comfortable, valuable retirement income. So protect that initial investment. For full details, write or visit your Air Force recruiter. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. This folder will show you why. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Dick Herbert speaking, and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.